GoldEye Beta 1 has been released. On the left, you'll see the TrueNOS dashboard for GoldEye Beta 1. And on the right, I'm gonna do a comparison between the Bang Tooth. Let's start with the storage tab. We'll see only one change on this tab, but it's indicative of a bigger change that's going on underneath the hood. Look in the bottom left corner here of Bang Tooth. You'll see the ZFS health with the green check, a little box to hit scrub, and some pool status information down here. In GoldEye, we don't see that. We just see online, no errors. We have a scheduled scrub at 0 hundred every Sunday, and we have the auto trim command. So these boxes are kind of the same, but it's different because of what's changed in our data protection. For the more advanced data protection tasks, they wanna move those under the hood and remove them from the UI in order not to confuse users. We jump over to data protection. We'll see the tabs are now very different because the widget in storage has been changed. On the right, on Fangtooth, we can see our true cloud backup tasks, our scrub tasks, cloud sync tasks, snapshots, r -Syncs, replication, and smart tests. On the left, we have a lot of the same information. However, you'll notice it ends in replication tests. The periodic smart tests are no longer visible. These have been moved to the back end as a cron job and are not user configurable anymore. You can still make changes, but you will have to go through command line. Let's return to the data protection tab and go through each box one at a time. You'll notice here the boxes are exactly the same. They're named true cloud backup tasks and it's correspondingly true cloud backup tasks in Fangtooth. However, now we get these wonderful little descriptions here. So if you didn't know what a true cloud backup task was, you can read it's a backup to decentralized network provided by storage in partnership with TrueNOS. Each one of these boxes does correspond one to one. And when you click the add button, each of the menus is still exactly the same. The only thing that has changed is the front page of the way it's going to look. Next, let's move to the shares page. We can see left versus right, left being Goldeye and right being Fangtooth, that there's a big difference in the shares overview, but not necessarily the functionality. On the left, we can see all the boxes boxes are named the same thing, but just like in the data protection tab, we now have very good descriptions here of what each one of these things does, as well as a new type of share. So let's start on the right. We used to have Windows shares, Unix shares, and block iSCSI targets. We get the same three on the left in the same order, except now we have a new fourth type of share called an NVMe-OF subsystems. This stands for NVMe over fabric subsystems. NVMe over fabric is going to be the new replacement for iSCSI. So anyone that's currently using iSCSI iSCSI shares targets, NVMe OF is going to be the replacement for that because the iSCSI protocol is very old and out of date and has not been updated in a long time. You do not have to have an NVMe drive to use the NVMe over fabric subsystem share. This works just as well on spinning hard drives as it does on SSDs as NVMe drives. It's just the protocol that's being used to share the information to a remote system. This is a much newer protocol. It's much more up to date and it's made to use less commands and therefore increase speed between endpoints, giving us faster shares for people who use these type of shares in place of iSCSI targets. Next, we're going to look at networking. On the right, you see we have the network tab, just like it's always been here for Fangtooth and previously Electric Eel and all versions before that. In GoldEye, you'll notice the network tab is suspiciously absent. To find it here, we have to go to system and then network. Once we're there, it's the exact same tab, but for everybody that has to do the network configuration changes like adding primary and secondary DNS servers, which should be one of the things that we do on first setup every single time, making sure your gateway is correct. Next, let's look at credentials. In GoldEye, we're going to go to the new users work in progress. This is what it's going to look like when GoldEye is released out of beta. When I go to credentials here, this is what the old users looked like on Fangtooth. You'll notice there's a very big difference in the way that we're going to do the add users. So when I click an add user on Fangtooth, this is the screen that I'm given and all the options that are presented to me. When I click add users for what's going to be the new GoldEye, you'll see the screen looks very different. All I have to do here is give a username, select which access I want to give to my user, possibly give a password or SSH key if I want to do SSH access, and then select the role if I'm going to give it TrueNAS access. This greatly simplifies the confusion that some users had on the old interface for Fangtooth. Under credentials, there's been one more major change. When we go over to certificates, you'll notice that we're missing a box. And the box that we're missing from Fangtooth to GoldEye is the certificate authorities. The reason for that is TrueNAS will no longer be able to act as a certificate signing authority. That feature set has been removed from the operating system. From now on, if you want to have CA signed certificates, you're going to have to import them from a third party, something like Let's Encrypt. TrueNOS will not be able to sign its own certs anymore. That doesn't change the fact that it's going to continue to have its own self-signed cert. The only difference is now you will not be able to sign additional certificates within the operating system. Let's jump to containers. On GoldEye, we have the same container screen that we have on Fangtooth. However, it has been changed to now run libvert. Incus is going to be completely deprecated in GoldEye. From this point forward, everything will run with the libvert middleware. There is supposed to be a tool made by IX that's going to automatically move anything that's based in Incus over to libvert without any user interaction required. Moving on to virtual machines, we see here the interfaces on the left and on the
the right are completely the same. There have been no UI changes. However, there have been some changes under the hood that you can't see. One of the changes is that virtual machines that used to be in the containers tab will not start automatically now. Let's move on to the apps tab. In Goldeye, I set up a new app for Watchtower. When I click Watchtower here and I click on edit, we can see one of the new changes is that the YAML is now color coded. It has already been stated in the release notes that there is a major UI overhaul coming for this. An additional change to the apps page is the way that we can choose the apps pool. You'll notice on the configuration for both sides, we have the ability to choose pool. In Goldive, now we can actually do a complete migration from one pool to another, which was previously unavailable. In the event I had more than one pool on Goldive, I can go ahead and select a different pool in order to migrate my watchtower or any other applications I have running from my tank into a different pool. Additionally, the settings have changed for anyone running a GPU driver. Unfortunately, I don't have a GPU card attached to this test machine, but usually down here is where you would see the option to install the NVIDIA GPU drivers. The NVIDIA GPU drivers have changed to the open source drivers. As such, there has been an update to the supported cards available for NVIDIA. On the release page, you can go ahead and click the list for compatible GPUs and check to see if your GPU is included. This is important to do because anyone running anything previous to the NVIDIA GTX 1630 will be eliminated. People like me who run an NVIDIA P400 will have to upgrade their cards. In the event you're looking to upgrade your card because you have one of the cards that's been deprecated, the lowest card that I recommend you go with is something like a GTX 1630 or possibly a T400. These cards are right on the edge of being deprecated but are still going to work with the latest release driver, which should be carried forward for at least a few years in TrueNAS. If you want it to be safer than that and go just a little bit more recent so that even in the next update you'll be safe, nothing older than the RTX 2000 series is where you're going to want to land. Lastly, let's look at the system tab. The first thing we notice is the update page has been completely changed. This is due to the new philosophy behind IX Systems updates path. Previously, you would choose what build train you would want to be on. On Fangtooth, we can see here, when I expand, I have the option to be on the Fangtooth train or the Goldeye beta train. In the future, this will not be the case. You will choose between an update profile. In this case, you'll see the early adopter and developer are the only available profiles to me because I'm on a beta version. On the release page, we can see that these are going to be all the future profiles available to the user. Developer and tester are gonna put you on very, very advanced trains that I don't recommend people run on their production server. Developer will put you on the nightly releases, which in this case would be 26.04, half moon. Tester would put you on the beta release in the event you wanted to test something like Goldeye, as well as early adopter. Most people will fall in one of these three areas. General will put you on the latest release. Conservative will put you one release back from the latest release. And Mission Critical will put you one whole version behind. IX has published the Goldeye version notes. I will go ahead and link this in the video description in the event you want to read through each bullet point. All the notable changes are listed here that we've gone over in this video, as well as links to every single ticket that it references. The goal is to release this in October with all of the rough edges smoothed out and ready to go. If you want to go ahead and install this, make sure you're doing it in a virtual machine and do not upgrade your system as of yet, as there are a few things that may cause conflict if you're already working on Fangtooth and you choose to go to the beta of Goldeye. If you like this video, please leave us a comment below. Let me know what you think about the new updates. What did they do right? What did they do wrong? What should be included? And what is something you would really love to see this operating system do in the future? Give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to thank me personally, please buy me a coffee.